Hello, welcome to Mix Training. This is Better Mix, and today we're gonna see the wet drop. Alright, so what's this weird thing, the wedge wrap? Well, the wedge render wrap, as it says in the docs, allows you to render uh, a specific wrap multiple times. Uh, you can vary parameters in the process and it's pretty useful for exporting changes in parameters. The time you will use this is when you're trying to make maybe finding the, the right explosion or the right variation or layering multiple simulations on top of each other. So I'm going to show you two different ways that you can use this. And if you are actually rendering uh, images uh, to disk, you can al also even watermark the images with this command here. Uh, we're not going to see that today, but we may do that later in another video. So I have this one simulation of Roberto, it's just broken into uh, several pieces and it's falling to the ground. Uh, just really simple stuff, we're just gonna uh, explain what the process or the concept of the wedge is. So you can see this is the process here that I did, it's just broken into pieces, uh, nothing special, but let's say that the uh, maybe the director or the supervisor or even you are not sure which one of these uh, breakups will be better. And uh, the, the supervisor said, uh, could you give me some variations and I, I come back and then you show me uh, the uh, different versions and I can just choose one for those. And yeah, you can do that totally. So like how many variations you want? Five, ten. All right. So let's uh, once you have this setup, which is nothing uh, out of the ordinary, you need to have a file cache. Let's do another one just so you know what I how you would do this nothing special here just the w same way you always do cache uh, but to get different variations just just create a wedge I'm gonna create another one here just so uh, from scratch so you can see this uh, let me call this to one uh, just to it because you're gonna do one just just the one so you can see this is really simple uh, wedge wrap here it's pretty simple what it does it's pretty powerful, but the, the interface is pretty simple. So what we need here, it's the output driver. In this case, it's gonna be this one. We can just drag it there, but don't leave it like this because it, it's expecting this guy inside here. You can see I just double click inside here. This is the output driver. So if you leave it like this, it will fail. So you can just type here, render, or just start typing and selecting the render node there. And that's what we need. We need, again, we need this guy there. Now that we have the output, we need to tell the wedge uh, which parameters we want to bury for each version. So you can see in the wedge there is a number of samples, which means how many times do you want me to run this this uh, render? So it's gonna cache. In this case, it's gonna cache four times. It's gonna have a render seed, and uh, here is where we set what parameters we want to randomize a every time the render runs. If we just run it like this, each one's gonna be the same. It's just gonna have four renders with the same thing. So we need to have some parameters to randomize. So let's create the first parameter just by clicking this. You can have as much parameters as you want. In this case, we're gonna just do one because it's all we need. So we wanna randomize this seed parameter here because you can see if we change that, the fracturing will change, right? Let me go back to frame one. You can see the fracturing changes, it's just removing this. So if I change this parameter and recalculate the simulation, every simulation is gonna be different. So let's just right click here and copy this parameter, which is the simpler way, and right click on here and say set paste relative reference. Now we don't need all this stuff. We need to delete all this. We just need the, the path to the parameter like this. We don't need the any expressions. I just did that because it's easier to get this parameter. You can type this here, but I just do it like that. Now we can give it a name. In this case, it's the seed. You can give it any name you want here. It's just for your reference. Now it's gonna repeat four times here. You can repeat it five, six, seven, any amount of times you need. Let's say five. And then this is the range that it's gonna be running onto. And this value here is going to be the value that's going to be replaced here. So 
it's going to put 0 or 0 0.3 or 0 0.1 or something like that between these two values. So for C, let's I use, I always use like a big number. So it's going to be a huge amount of seeds there. But again, it's all we only going to run it for five times. You want to run it for more times. You can just make it run several times here. So now there's nothing connecting this guy to the wedge. So we need to use the wedge variable here to make different variations. So every time it runs, the wedge uh, variable will change. It's similar to what the frame uh, variable does. So we're going to put it here. Let me just put underscore wedge like that. That's all we need to do. This is so simple to do and so useful. So the wedge variable here, it's going to change to whatever number it generates here and it's going to generate another sequence and then another sequence. And the, at the end of the day, we're going to have five totally different sequences. So now instead of running this from here to cache, we need to run it from here. So let's run this uh, render wedges and it's going to be really fast. So you can see it runs once and then runs again and then runs again and then runs again. I'll be see you when this is done. All right, so the render is done. This is uh, really simple stuff. And you can see if we go here and try to select one of those sequences, you can see here. All right, you can see here we have five different sequences. You can see the wedge parameter here was replaced with wedge seed and then the seed that it used to generate this. And this is useful because if you later load this and the director says, uh, said uh, I, I like version 3, you know which seed it is and you can set the seed here and get that exact version. So I just loaded here a few versions. You can see I have one here, one here. So I loaded up about five versions here and just put them here so you can see them. And uh, let me move put some normals and there we go and you can see we have five different versions really quickly and we can show the director or the supervisor and they can tell us which one they like or you which one you like or you just do whatever you want with these wedges or whatever you need uh, so this is one way of you in using wedges and it's pretty amazing so there's another way you can use wedges and gonna show you what I did for this I have this particles here so it's just Roberto twisting around and leaving some particles behind let me move put this to pixels it's just leaving some particles behind so this is a trick that I do sometimes to get more volume into my particles or even even if you don't, you don't have like maybe enough RAM on your workstation and you want to render an um, insane amount of particles, you can just use a wedge and render different wedges and then combine them. Like in this case, we have like, uh, I don't know, almost a million particles there. But then I throw this into a wedge, which I am doing here with this wedge here. You can see I'm randomizing two parameters here, the seed and the offset and these parameters are inside here which are this seed here and the offset here of this uh, curl noise that I have here so once I do that and cache all those versions I have four versions here that I cache you can see this is version 1 and then I have another version you can see this is one is totally different you can also use this for maybe if, if you are looking for a different uh, simulation and see what what the the parameters do is that these are different and different and different but for particles if you combine these ones you can see now we have a more dense uh, volume of particles and we should have about uh, two million particles almost three million but you can get a lot more particles like you can see if this is just seven thousand seven hundred thousand particles uh, but you can see this is this will be very simple to to handle by your computer but if you did it again again and again you can multiply the amount and i have two renders i did that for to show you the difference here you can see this this one is just one pass of the particles and then if i layer all those four 
particles you can see i have two a lot of particles here and the uh, amount is it's four times more particles and looks more solid it has a lot more detail and if you render like semi-transparent particles you will get your really nice effects uh, when the particles where the particles overlap and it's a trick that a lot of people use for for doing an insane amount of particles there you go that's the wedge tool uh, of course you can use it to render whatever kind of output uh, houdini does uh, you can vary any parameter at all and uh, any parameter that takes a number at least that i know and uh, that's it all right guys hope you enjoyed this one this is a very nice trick uh, hope you learned something today and let's keep learning together. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers!